For Krima Media's quality, this is Sane Lamini. Joining me today is former United Nations Executive Director of Women, Pumzile Mlambo Mdruga, to discuss essay politics and her new role as UJ Chancellor as we celebrate Women's Month. So, ma'am, for the longest time, you have been a strong advocate for women's rights, hence this interview. You were once a South Africa's first woman uh, to occupy a big position of being a deputy president. And you had advocated for women's rights on the international stage uh, through the United Nations. Could you briefly tell us about this international work that you have undertaken? I thank you very much and happy Women's Month to all the women who will uh, see this interview. Uh, working for the United Nations um, meant working with women around the world. Uh, it meant working with member states who are members of the United Nations because the United Nations is an intergovernmental organization, but it also meant working with civil society because without civil society, the women's struggle would not go anywhere. We also reached out to work with a business and that has increased a, a lot during my time. And we worked with the academics and one area of extension was working with men and boys around the world. Because in the end, this whole issue of patriarchy and gender inequality is a men's problem. If we do not engage the men who are making them get away with murder, basically, because they have to take responsibility and find ways of intervening so that we don't leave women carrying this burden just by themselves. So my work involved uh, dealing with uh, legislative reforms around the world because uh, we still have thousands of laws around the world that discriminate against women. So if in a country, even the laws of your country uh, in black and white discriminate uh, against you, you have no chance to make the progress that is expected. We work a lot also on highlighting the unique impact of discrimination, for instance, on the girl child, which is why we emphasize the girl child, because we do have the Children's Rights Act, which cover both boy and girl child. But it is the girl child who's forced to marry an older man just because she's a girl. It is the girl child who's forced to have female genital mutilation because she's a girl. It is a girl child who is taken out of school by a family because of boy preference. So we were fighting all of these issues in different countries. And then, of course, we also needed to make sure that we call for investments in women's work because it is not free. You have to spend money to address these problems. At this point, many countries still don't invest enough on women's work. They more or less think this is just something you can just do by the way. So we were dealing with the... Uh, uh, ministers of finance in different countries uh, to push them to allocate money and also the services that women need so that they can have a robust life like you know access to child care services women can't go to work because they have to take care of children but of course there are some countries who have done well already and we congratulate them and we encourage them and in south africa in some areas we were doing okay but in some areas we were Bad. And one area where we really were bad is GBV. That remains an area of concern. Speaking about GBV uh, during this month as well, why do you think our country is so violent uh, towards women, ma'am? And what can be done to edge the sketch of uh, GBV? Well, we have a violent past, uh, which we probably have not uh, addressed adequately yet, but also our law enforcement is weak. Perpetrators of violence against women become serial perpetrators because they can. 
uh, they can get away with us. We, do, we have not put in place uh, measures to deter them. You know, make sure that a person thinks twice before uh, trying to, to be violent uh, towards, towards women. And we are also a country that is urbanizing quickly and there is many domestic uh, support system uh, that helps to bring these values that would highlight uh, the importance of being respectful for women. And at the same time, we still have a strong rural component in our culture, in our norms, which tends to make gender-based violence, um, you know, just one of those things that women must just suck in and move on. Uh, and then when you have a law enforcement system that, that, that does not show that it is intolerant to any violence against women, then it's a, it's a horrible cocktail. And we, I would say, I would still call again for men to provide uh, role models of good men so that from a young age, a boy has the kind of image of a man that you and I would like to see in society. We don't see that enough and that has to be an effort we have to work on it. A man has to get up every day saying, I am going to be a good man for my boy. And I am going to walk with him so that he understands that this is important in society. And speaking about women having a say in our societies, for the first time in KZN, we've seen the appointment of the premier, Nomosa Dubengube, to lead uh, KwaZulu Natal. This must be a proud moment for you, especially as you also come from the province. How do you describe this appointment? Well, I am really excited uh, for Nomsa. She is a very competent uh, woman. I don't know why it took so long. <laughs> and uh, she has international experience because she has been an ambassador as well, but she's also been in government in different portfolio in the province for, for a long time. So she brings in a lot of insight and experience. And I think she probably is the most qualified premier we have had in Guazulu Natal. If you just look at the experience that she comes with already into the job. And now let's touch on your foundation, uh, titled uh, Umlambo Foundation, which focuses on improving education outcomes in public schools. Tell us more about the activities of your foundation. We have uh, three uh, chunks of activities in Umlambo Foundation, all um, supporting uh, school improvement so that as many of our children and girl children in particular get the best of what is possible to get from learning. We work on improving the schools that we work with so that they can uh, perform optimally. We work with a school principal on leadership and all the issues that the school principal has to take care of in school so that the school does well. Matters that will ensure that teachers are inspired uh, that uh, they also uh, pay attention to the quality of learning and teaching that is provided uh, in, 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 in the schools. And, and that the teachers are also aware of the many uh, necessary guidelines in the school system that teachers have to respect for the school to work well, like not coming late because you lose hours in a year of not teaching because the teacher is late. If the principal does not put his foot down, the school go downhill. Mm. So lateness, absenteeism, incompletion of children, the accessibility of 
the infrastructure that is important in the school, such as uh, connectivity. These are all the things that the school principal has to be on top of. So we assist also the principal to make the school function well. Secondly, we highlight uh, digital literacy for the teachers and for the principal so that the school work in a smart way so that the teachers transmit digital literacy to the students so that we are preparing them for a realistic future. So we provide a full suite of digital literacy for teachers. In teaching leadership to principal and digital literacy to the teachers, we inject gender equality in all the methodologies that we use so that the teachers, for instance, as, as they provide digital literacy to the children, they are also conscious about closing the gender digital divide because we have a big gender digital divide. You are making sure that the girls are in focus. Whereas with the principal, we are making sure that when he or she is dealing with leadership issues, there's always an awareness about gender inequality in the school system so that it is fitted into the activities of the school. For instance, the studying of STEM subjects by the girls, the principal has to be checking how many girls are doing science, how many are doing maths, how are they doing, what additional help do they need? And if they do need, we need that help. We are also interfering and helping them to access that help. And then the third area of work is a scholarship. There are few, but we just use this scholarship is motivation so that the kids are always trying hard so that uh, they do well and they may qualify for our for our scholarships and we always make sure that uh, we have a equal number of boys and girls who we we pick on every time we we take a new group to university speaking about uh, the fourth industrial uh, revolution i know that you are also going to be joining one of the universities in our country, the University of Johannesburg, as a chancellor. Congratulations are in order for that appointment. What does this position mean to you? Well, I mean, it's uh, close to my heart because it's in education, uh, an area that uh, I am uh, uh, concerned uh, about. So I will be supporting the university, but I'll also see how they can be a support to the schools. But I also want to support their mission of uh, partnering with different universities uh, around the world. For instance, they deal a lot, uh, not a lot, but you know they have a, a number of disabled students and I'm linking them up with a university in the US that deals with the students who cannot hear. They provide degrees up to PhD. So there is a, a nice possibility there to, to collaborate. University of Edinburgh, they, they keep a lot of documentation that is important for South Africa of the anti-apartheid struggle. And I want them to have access to that information so that in their historic records, they, they are able to do that. But I'm also concerned that our universities must help us solve the problems that are worrying all of us. How can we intervene to provide uh, education to local um, government elected representatives and officials? Uh, how can we as a um, university uh, teach ethics? Because very few people specialize in ethics in university. But right now, everybody has to be concerned about ethics. And a lot of the people who have stolen the biggest monies that we know about from the state, which is stealing from the poor, is people who already have university education. So there's something very wrong that universities have done that have produced people who have no sense of responsibility and in, in, in ethics. What do you think it would take for our politicians to prioritize the needs of the people? The electoral system has to work for the people, not for the party. 
We need an electoral system that gives power to the voters so that voters are able to kick out someone who does not serve them. Our electoral system does not quite allow for that. Elected politicians are beholden to their parties and the communities that they are supposed to be servicing are last in line. And a, a change in the electoral system is absolutely, absolutely needed. And lastly, ma'am, I know that you also come from uh, a black middle income township in Deben uh, called Clermont. What would you say to a girl child uh, who may think that uh, she can never be destined for greater things because of where she comes from? Well, you know, how you begin your life does not defy how it will end. Never make your starting point to be your ambition because your future can be determined through your work and through the exposure that you are going to have in life. If you just think that uh, Nelson Mandela came from a rural, rural area, look at who he became. And in every generation, in, in families where there has been an opportunity for education, which is why I am so passionate about education, because I see it as a passport out of poverty. And I see it as the biggest mechanism to fight against gender inequality, something that the girls absolutely need. Because once you have received education, no one can ever take, a, take it away from you. No politician can do that. No system, it is yours and you can use it the way you want to. Education is also important because it can be given to as many people as possible. There is no restriction to how many people you can educate. So I would say to children who are growing up in difficult situations, do everything to educate yourself so that where you start will have nothing to where you will end. That one is open for you. The sky is the limit. That was former UN Executive Director of Women, Pumzilim Lambonduga, in conversation with Polity about essay politics and her new role as UJ Chancellor.